not really uh, so exciting to me because I studied similar cases in past and I can understand this is possible. Dr. Shah's most famous case is Pralad Jani, a holy man who claims he has not eaten or drunk anything since he was 12. I haven't eaten anything, not even now, even though I'm 80 years old. That made me really quite excited because I, I knew that this is something uh, going to change the feeling of medical world. Although I walk 100, 200 kilometers in the jungle, I never sweat, nor feel tired or sleepy. I can meditate for 3, 8 or 12 hours or even months. Pralad Jani recently spent 10 days in observation, watched and filmed 24 hours a day. Minute to minute, second to second. And he was kept in a cabin which was sealed from outside. The bathroom was sealed. One of my assistants would remain with him all throughout 24 hours in the changing duty. Doctors would come throughout the day at different time which was not be told to him. And we made sure that nothing can go wrong in the sense medical world should know that there was not a single loophole. They took blood samples from me three times a day, morning, afternoon and evening. They checked my kidney, brain and put machines all over my body. They were trying to find out which factors made my body work. They put machines inside my body also. He was not given any food or water. And even when he was allowed to take a bath, the quantity of water was measured before and after to make sure nothing was lost. As I said, after 10 days, uh, uh, the parameters were all normal. We studied his uh, hematology and whatever studies you can think of, we could do it. I will live up to approximately 1,000 to 5,000, maybe even 10,000 years with this kind of body. That there was no food or water given to this man, that he did not pass urine or stool, and even he did not dribble urine. After a few hours, the urine would appear, some fluid would appear in the bladder, and again it would disappear. It is possible to modify fluid intake so you produce a very small amount of urine each day. And if he is covered with a cloth, the chances are he could urinate and it would evaporate from the ground or soak into the ground without anyone noticing. Modern medicine tells us that an average human can only survive for four days without water. While confined, Pralad Jani incredibly lasted ten days under observation. Dr. Shah has a theory on how he's managing to survive without food or fluid. He feels the holy man is feeding off the sun. Iradhan Manik used to do solar gazing. He, he says that you have to go to a flat ground and barefooted and just look at the sun. It's impossible for us to generate heat or light energy from looking at the sun, almost likening it to photosynthesis, which is the process by which plants generate their energy supply. And this is absolutely impossible for a human being to do. On the first day, you look for five seconds, but without blinking your eyes. Every few days, you increase few seconds, and maybe after a month, you come to a minute or so. In fact, staring at the sun would damage the retina of the eye. Scientists from America also examined him several times in ophthalmic system, and he found nothing abnormal. The sun transmits energy through a hole in the holy man's throat, producing a sticky, solid lump that he can redigest. <laughs> This, he claims, refuels the chakra power points in his body. It is not a miracle, it is supernatural. Could these results provide the answer to how the boy is surviving without food and water? Unfortunately, we cannot take Ram to a lab. For us to have any chance of replicating the doctor's findings, we must head back to Nepal and set up once again from the beginning for four days and four nights of continuous recording and observation. However, when we get back to the site, we are met with a very different scenario. While we were away, 59 people witnessed Ram spontaneously burst into flames as fire erupted from his chest. Uh, 
On the 5th of January, Wednesday, around 8 o'clock, we saw fire coming from him. He stood and threw the cloth in front of him and was naked in the middle of a burning fire. And then after some time, in a very soft voice, he called for his brother. He asked for a red rope to be thrown over him. He wrapped the cloth over his body and he said, let him concentrate on his meditation and do not disturb him. Over the past 300 years, there have been more than 200 reports of spontaneous combustion, the burning of a body without an identifiable ignition source. Its cause is an unsolved mystery. However, looking at previous evidence of Ram's sweating and assuming that he can control and increase his body's temperature through tumor meditation, maybe this is an extreme demonstration of his power, or just an increasingly elaborate hoax to gain more publicity. After just a week away, security has tightened, and the brother seems a deflated figure. When you start making about 20,000 rupees a day from this, and there's money involved, and this is Nepal, there's going to be fights. It would be unnatural if, you know, if the committee wasn't, hadn't started bickering about it yet. The committee seems to have evolved and doubled in size, and it is not clear who is in charge. There are many voices, all challenging for superiority. The family probably would, would feel left out of all this and probably feel like um, their son's original purpose has been defeated by all this money-making and that is very un-Buddha-like. There seems to be a split within the committee as to whether or not we are to be allowed to continue. In fact, the government's response has been very interesting. You know, originally they said, well, we're going to test the boy. You know, the Royal Nepal Academy of Science and Technology is going to go and take blood samples and do a DNA test. I don't know why DNA, but, uh, but they haven't done it yet. The government of Nepal requested us to visit that site and observe it, what's happening it. We went very close by and we observed very minutely. His body is almost dead, you know, only the head part is live. We are concerned about the way of meditation without uh, having any food and drink, <laughs> drinks. And next to that, uh, the propaganda. Face color was red, like blood color. It is important to test on the boy if we want to know the truth. The report sent to the government states that the boy should be left undisturbed to complete his meditation and not to be tested scientifically. Whatever he is doing there, it is his personal right. There's not even been an effort to try to regulate the income or see who's getting what and try to see if it's not being scammed, that people are not being uh, cheated. There's no official um, oversight over this whole thing. So it's, it's happening in this sort of a, you know, Wild West kind of um, jungle setting. Another film crew has also arrived. They have even more difficulty than us and fail to get close to the boy. If you are making documentaries, the people are never knowing if you are acting also on the political parts or just for a documentary. And uh, sometimes it also can be very difficult and very dangerous also to shoot here with a camera. Nepal is in the grip of a long-raging civil war. 11,000 people have died in the last nine years. The ruling royals are holding elections in the next few days, but violence has escalated as the Maoist people's movement tried to take over. And some believe the Maoist guerrillas have been seen in the area. I think the Maoists are more acting in the villages <laughs> where it's for the army more difficult to reach and more difficult to fight against them. Everybody is speaking in Nepal, you know, the Maoists are speaking, the political parties are speaking, and this guy just sit there like a silent prophet. Eventually we are allowed to film, but under close inspection from the committee. We reset our cameras to record the next four days and nights. The length of time it takes for a human to die without fluid. This is the only way we can prove if he is genuine or not. After 48 hours of continuous observation,